I got my hands on one of these Freetronics LCD and keypad shields for Arduino. It's a 16 by 2 character line display and it works pretty well using the standard Arduino LCD library, Liquid Crystal library. Uh, one thing I did notice though is the backlight is very, very, very bright. Basically my very first project was to uh, create a life counter as a test, I play a little bit of Magic the Gathering and each opponent has uh, 20 life which they count down and the first person to hit zero basically is the loser. I'll just step you through uh, my code. I the life totals for player number one, player number two. I keep a counter of who is the current player. It's a little misleading. So zero is the person on the left of the LCD and um, one is the person on the right of the LCD. And I also keep track of um, how long the select button has been held down for so that I can provide a reset function. And this is a life counter and then I call an update life total to get moving the main loop so then we go and read the button but basically if um, no button was uh, pressed well then we uh, reset our reset counter if the left button was pressed and only if it was just pressed we change the who to the left hand player. Uh, this is because uh, as you can see in the example the uh, left and right buttons select the player and the up and down change the life total. Uh, conversely if we push the right button we change the who to the rightmost player. If we push the up button and it's just pressed of course then we basically check who the current player is and adjust their life total upwards. And down also does minus minus, uh, which is decrement by one. Then button select is that button on the right hand side. Um, I stole this from the demo code where they just basically start pulsing the LCD backlight. So we tell it to turn the backlight off, delay for a bit and turn the backlight on. Uh, here's another chunk of example code that we don't actually need anymore. Um, and then I add one to the reset counter and basically if the reset counter is greater than 10 then we set it to zero and we basically reset all the life totals and we update the life counts. So you hold down the select button it's going to flash uh, 10 times and then um, and then the life totals all get reset. So after we've handled the button then we do a quick check if a button was just pressed or released we update the life count and then we clear our button pressed and release flags and then a short delay now I should talk about this delay here for a minute so if you don't have the delay in there what happens is uh, the life count sorry will jump forward or backwards a couple of times so just by putting a short delay in there it means that at that noisiness and pressing the buttons is smoothed out a bit. Okay, this read buttons uh, function is basically straight from the demo. I did not change anything in this whatsoever. And then here's the bit where we update our life totals. This little function here. So what we start by doing is we set the cursor to the first column on the second line. Uh, we start outputting the left hand player's life total. Now if it's less, th less than 10 but still greater than 0 we just put in a space. That's because uh, we want there to be a leading space so that the ones digit is always in the same column. Uh, this should lead you to the conclusion actually that um, the uh, 99 is the highest life total that will display. Actually the life counter just keeps on counting upwards but it will only display 99. 
basically if the life is less than zero uh, or equal to zero then they get an XX which basically means they're dead the game's finished otherwise if life is greater than 99 then we just put 99 like I said we don't print anything higher even though we leave keep recording the total is higher otherwise we just output whatever the life total is so at this point here if it's 17 it just writes 17 if it's 7 um, we've output a space first and then a 7 so that the digits are always the ones digits are always in the second column finally we check who the current player is and if the current player is the left hand player then we put a star next to them otherwise we just put in a space then we print a bunch of blank spaces so basically this is so that uh, it blanks out the middle area of the LCD so here we hard set the cursor the 14th column on the second line and then again we check are we the current is the right hand player the current one if the right hand player is the current one then we output an asterisk next to it otherwise we output a space So I've uh, play tested with this and it looks pretty well, uh, works pretty well actually. Uh, that's it, I hope you like it.